Hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Walking by Faith. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States of America, and I want to welcome you in. Just come on in. We're going to continue our teaching on why faith. Now, today, we may conclude it. That's my goal to finish the day. But if not, we have to do it one more week. But we're going to talk about why faith. Now, look, please invite your family members and friends. You say, how do I do that? Just hit the like button, hit the share button, and hit the subscribe button. Why? Because we want to reach as many people as we can with the uncompromising gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's pray, let's make our daily confession, and let's get into the word. Okay, are you ready? Father, right now in Jesus' name, first of all, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Father, for the privilege to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Holy Father, that you give us ears to hear. I thank you, Father, your word says that we, we know and we hear the voice of the good shepherd and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. I thank you for the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're the teacher. And I ask you to help me teach this gospel, teach this word with simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of people. And then, Father, I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind every outer word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring, us, bring against us this night to hinder the word of God and hinder the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare and we decree in Jesus' name, not one of those things shall be manifested and not one of them should come to pass in our lives. But Father, we thank you. We believe and we stand in agreement that all of your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, Father, that what you have started in us, you will complete in us until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we are remembered to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Well, come on now. One thing else we need you to have, we need you to have a Bible. Please make sure you have a Bible. Make sure you have a notepad, a pen, something to take notes with. Now, before we do that, I want you to take your Bibles. Come on. Wave them in the air like you really care. Come on, wave them. All right. Now, you might have your phone. Wave your phone or your tablet. Wave your tablet. And let's make this confession together. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Okay. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hallelujah. Let's go to our foundation scripture. We're talking about why faith. Now, my voice might sound a little scratchy or hoarse, but I'm healed by Jesus' strife. We just came out of revival, and uh, we was at... Uh, 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 who was that? John, I mean, uh, Jonathan Seller Shutterworth was in town and he had a revival uh, here in Milton, Washington. We went, participated in it, and I got the jet dancing and yelling and hooping with the teenagers. I was just having a good time. I mean, praise God. And I believe what he started, we're going to continue to go throughout the Northwest, uh, Seattle. Washington State shall be saved. Hallelujah. God is raising up some wild, mighty men and women of God who don't apologize for the gospel and going for it with all their might. So hallelujah. So let's look at uh, uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live 
by faith. Now, this is not the only place where God said the just shall live by faith. He also told us that in Habakkuk 2, I think it was Habakkuk. Let me make sure I'm giving you the right scriptures. Hallelujah. You, said, yep, you got to read, read your notes. Yep, yep. That's so I don't mess up and give you the wrong information. Hallelujah. So over there in Habakkuk, yep, Habakkuk 2 and 4, also in Galatians 3.11, and also in Hebrews 10.38. God said the just, this is the way we live. It ain't a suggestion. This is how we live. Now, when you live, that's what you do all the time. He said the just shall live by faith. It's not an option. That's the way we live. It's not like option one or option two. This is what God, this is why he's telling us to live. It says without faith in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Please who? Impossible to please God. It said for he that cometh to him, you must. You come to God, you must believe that he is. And then what? And, believe, and then that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The last time I was with you, I said, you can love somebody without believing everything they say or trusting what they say. See, you can love somebody without believing everything that they say or trusting everything you say, what they say. But with God, hey, you can believe every word he said, guarantee. And I'm going to give you a scripture. Let's go over to Numbers. Numbers 23 and 19. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Numbers 23 and let's look at verse 19. This is from the King James. It says, God is not a man. See, this talk talking about why faith. Why do we have faith? Faith is having confidence in the word of God. When you are fully persuaded, you don't stagger at the promises of God. How do you know the will of God? By the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. And it says this, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Now, listen, listen to this. Pay attention. Has he said and shall he not do it? That's the question. If God said it, believe me, he's going to do it. Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? That's why we stick with the Bible. That's why we stick with the word of God. That's why we walk around, we preach. We do not apologize for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because if God said it, he's going to do it. That's his word. If Jesus said by his stripes you are healed, you are healed. If God said that you bring your tithes and offerings and he opened up the windows of heaven and poured you out blessing, there's not room enough to receive. That's exactly what he's going to do. He says to give and it will be given back onto you. Good measures pressed down, shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Why do you have confidence in that? Because God said it and he's going to do what he said. You do your part, God does to it. Do it, does his part. Amen. Okay. Now let's go over to Romans chapter three, Romans three, and look at verses three through four. Look at Romans chapter three, and let's look at verses three through four. Romans three, it says this, verse three and four. It says, what if some did not believe? See, what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? You know the answer for that. Verse 4, I'm going to tell you, God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. How are you justified? By what you say. If you always want to be in right with God, just say what God said. Get this word in you and say what God says. That's how you'll be justified. The just live by faith. We walk by faith. And we fight the good fight of faith. The only faith, the only fight the Christian should be in is in the faith fight. See, I'm telling you why faith. See, because God's word is true. And then let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 6 
Look at verse 12 again. First Timothy. I know you know it, but we're going to read it again so we don't get you messed up. First Timothy chapter 6. Okay, I'm in 2 Timothy. That's why I can't find 6. First Timothy chapter 6 and look at verse 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses, okay? We hear, watch this, we hear a lot of people say, let go and let God. There's a big difference between let go and lay hold. Okay, look, let's, let's read it again, watch. It says, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold. What we doing? We laying hold on eternal life. It's a big difference. Let go, lay hold. Let go, lay hold. There's a big difference between let go and lay hold. He told us to fight the good fight of faith and to lay hold. Now, I know sometimes people say, let go, let, let go, and let God. Now, a lot of times they say, just let God go. That's just a religious saying, and let God do everything. No, he told you and I to hold, lay hold. Lay hold of eternal life. What is that? We laying hold of the promises of God. We are laying hold of the word of God. No matter what it looks like, we're going to lay hold of what his word says. Okay. Go go to 2 Corinthians. <laughs> I'm winding this down. Let, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is why faith. Now, if you want to, if this is your first time, you have to go back and look at the other episodes. Because a lot of time the trains, I'm getting ready to the bird, we get ready to bring the what we call a plane to bird. We get ready to land this plane. We get ready to let this let people off. Now, if you come in when we unload the plane, you go, where was your flight? You missed the whole flight. You got to go back, get on when we loading the plane up. Making sure everybody's stuff is stored in the overhead, under the seat, and, and, and we back up, back up from the gate and get off the runway, and then we get up to our altitude of flying. Now, we done took this wide faith, went around it, all kinds of different ways. Now, we coming into land. So, don't just jump in the day and say, oh, I don't know about all of that. Well, you missed probably three-fourths of the teaching on it. Go back, look at the other episodes. And I could teach on this for longer and longer, but the Lord said, I believe that he brought me to a point. This is it. As much of notes he gave me, that's where I stop. But you can teach on why faith until Jesus come. Why? Because there's so many people that still don't understand it. They don't know the importance of why faith. So we try to make it as simple as we can. So what? Just lay that foundation of why faith, why you need faith. Then we could teach on how faith works. How to believe God to answer your prayer. See, faith is how we live in everything. It's not just a one-time thing. It's not a movement. It's a way of life. Hallelujah. Okay. Now look, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Did I say 3? Chapter 10. Check in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Oh, glory be to God. I'm glad I came today. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And look at verses 3 through 5. You guys ready? 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 for 5. It says, though, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. It says, For the weapons of our warfare, see, he letting you know there's some weapons. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that do what? That exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought that is disobedience, that is every thought to, I mean, and bring it into captivity every thought to what? To the obedience of Christ. That's a, that's a position God told you and I to do. You bring every thought and to the obedience of Christ. How do we know when it's in obedience and to Christ? When it's in line to what God said and what his word said. See, when somebody tells you it's not God's will for you to be healed, no, you cast that thought down. Why? Because the word of God says, by his stripes you heal. Uh, he sent his word and healed them. For Jesus, for God not to be your will to be healed, Jesus would have to go and get rid of all them stripes he took before he got up on that cross.
See, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And in the Amplified, it says, until your joy overflows. If your joy is not overflowing, then you're not having life abundantly yet. That's the promise of God. And we're not going to back off of it. You know, people get upset about prosperity and people being blessed. I mean, come on, man. Are you for real? I mean, I don't know why we have to keep going around this stuff. I don't know a man or woman yet that gets up in the morning and pray and ask God to let them be poor. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have more than enough. Why? So you can meet the needs of others. He said, beloved, I wish above all things. How many things? All things. No, come on. How many? All things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Man, you, you got to be dense to listen to people. See, they tell you stuff that's not in the word that God wants you to be poor and, and, and he, don't want, he wants you to barely make it. No, he's El Shaddai. He's the God that's more than enough. He's not El Chipo. He's the God that's more than enough. People quote this all the time. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Guess what? He owns the hills that the cattle are uh, eating on too. Now, if he would take care of the cattle like that, why wouldn't he take care of you like that? All right, hallelujah. I'm talking about why faith. Faith is having confidence and being fully persuaded in the word of God. I'm not talking about people's religion. I'm not talking about their philosophy. I'm talking about the word of God. It is God's will for you to be healed. It is God's will for you to be prosperous. It is God's will for you to be set free. It is God's will for you to have peace. It is God's will for you to have joy. It is God's will. For you to be able to sleep sweet at night. He said he gave his beloved sweet sleep. It is God's will for you to live a victorious life. Okay, I'm going to show you that. See, you are fighting against. This is what we're fighting against. When we cast down. Look, this is what we're fighting against. You are fighting against unbiblical, ungodly, unbelieving thoughts and feelings. And the images that accompany that accompany those thoughts. See, when people come to you giving you un unbiblical things, it's not in the Bible, ungodly, unbelieving thoughts, that's what you're fighting with. When people tell you it's not God's will for you to be healed, or oh, don't believe God, he, he don't want to heal your kids from cancer. He just see, that's what you're fighting against. That is your fight. You're fighting against all these unbelieving, ungodly Bible teachers. I'm not sure exactly what they are. When they give you the thoughts, they give you the image that, oh, God put this on your child. He put this cancer on him because he needs another angel. That's a lie. He's doing it to humble you. It's a lie. See, that's what, see that's, that's what you fight. That's the warfare. You fight against all them thoughts. You got to cast them down. You have to cast them down. Now go to 1 John. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Go to 1 John. Hallelujah. Look at 1 John. This is one of our favorite church scriptures, is what we say around here. Look at 1 John, the epistle of John, first, the first epistle of John. And look at this in verse 5. In verse 4, it says, For whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Here's the question. Are you born of God? So I'm talking about why faith. For whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcometh the world. We ain't being crushed by the world. We overcome if the world. All the stuff in here, Jesus said, overcome the world. And look at verse, verse, the next part. And this is the victory. He's going to tell you what the victory is. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Okay, Jesus, how do we overcome the world? What is the victory that overcome the world? He says it. God tells you in his word, even our faith. So why do you think the devil attacks faith? And why did he attack faith teachers and faith preachers? Why do he attack you believing the word? Why? Because he knows this is what overcomes the world. Even our faith. People say, Raynard, I don't believe it takes all of that. Now let me tell you something right now. Look at me. Look me straight in my eye. I want you to hear. It takes all of that and more. 
If you just go with the rest of the flow of the world, with much of the church world, you are going to be a defeated, depressed, uh, poor Christian. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes almost level to the ground. But when you get in this word and you believe the promises of God, this is the victory that overcomes the world. What? Even our faith. See, faith, once you say you believe in God, we read it earlier, God said have faith in God. You have faith in God, you already winning. You ain't got faith in the devil, you, ain't, you got faith in God. God is the God of the impossible. When they tell you it can't be done, when they tell you you can't be healed, or you, look, God said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. He is the God of the impossible. When man say it can't be done, God said, I can do it. He just wants you to have faith in him. Have faith in him. Have faith in God. Amen. We are faith children of a faith God. And that makes us over coming children of an overcoming God. The agency by which we do it is by the faith which he put into us. That's how he did it. Remember we talked about God gave us the measure of faith? The stronger you get in faith, listen to me. I'm coming to an end. Of, we, we, get, we unload the plane. The stronger you get in faith, you just don't have any more down days. I don't have no down days. I know people might think I'm being cocky, arrogant, or what. I don't have no bad days. I don't have no down days. I'm always up. If, I, if, it, if it seems like I'm going to be down, I just spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One of the things I ask Christian people now, do you have the power? They're like, huh? Do you have the power? You got people, let me say this before I finish. You got people that believe that God don't fill people with the power of the Holy Ghost no more. They don't, he don't fill them with that pride of the Holy Ghost and praying and speaking in tongues. So here, I'm going to ask you this then. So you mean to tell me God didn't let the devil loose on the church, still kill, destroy, because some of you think he's got power. He don't have power. But you believe that God is letting the devil loose and he left his people, God, his, the people of God here powerless without any power to fight against the devil. Or not to fight against it, but to enforce his defeat. The Bible just told you this is the weapons of our warfare. You in a war, baby. And, and what did the Bible over there in, 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 in Timothy says? What? People have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And then what did God say? Stay away from such like that. Stay away from those who don't believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. The number one person the devil is scared of is a born again, spirit filled, tongue talking Christian. Why? Because he know he can't control them. They get filled up on the spirit of God and the word of God, man, anything can happen. See, they begin to believe. They building themselves up. They edifying themselves in God. I'm talking about why faith. Do you have faith in what God said? Or you listen to some ungodly philosopher non-believing, see, you have non-believing Christian, another non-believing Christian who's telling you, God ain't filling you with the Holy Ghost, ain't no devil, ain't casting out devil, ain't healing the sick, then I'm thinking, if God is doing all this against you, you don't have a chance. Come on, just think with it for a minute. If God is making you sick, God is making you poor, God is putting on this, what chance do you have? You don't have a chance in winning. But the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world. What? Even our faith. Now let me finish with this statement and we have to close this, wrap this up. No matter what you are going through or how awful a thing may be, you believe that you are going to come through it and be victorious. See, no matter what you're going through, 
no matter how awful it is, you continue to believe, all right, according to the word of God, that I'm going to make it and I'm going to come through it. Why? Because the greater one lives in me. The greater one. And this is the victory. Oh, man, glory be to God. He said, and this is the victory. Let me read it again. It says, let me read verse 4. I'm going to read the whole thing. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Look what it says. Even our faith. Glory be to God. And that's why faith. That's, that's where the victory comes from. By faith. But that's what it is. Remember what I said earlier? Believing is a choice. Believe, you can believe what I said or you choose not. Man, I'm telling you. But believing is a choice. You choose to believe the Bible or you choose not to believe the Bible. People say, man, you guys are so narrow-minded. You're right. Listen to me. I want you to hear this before I leave. Broad is the way. Broad is the way that leads us to destruction. There's a lot of people, all, all kinds of stuff. Churches, people, they doing all kinds of stuff. But you remember God said, broad is the way that leads us to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads us to life. And the Bible said, and there be few that find it with difficulty. The narrow way is the right way. Not the broad way. Everything go, anybody can come. No, that's a lie from hell itself. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Well, look, I want to thank all you guys for joining in. I got to listen, follow that clock. I'm running out of time. But I want y'all to know, man, that all the promises of God are yes and amen. See, faith takes Faith takes what grace has provided, but you have to take it by faith. How do I take it? You act on what the word says, and you go where the word is being preached. All right, well, look, I love y'all. Y'all be blessed, but remember this, that God is exalted. Satan, that no good sap sucker, he is defeated, and Jesus is Lord. P-O-H, peace out, homies and homieettes. We'll see you the next time. God bless you for now. Bye.